Today on the 302, we are in historic Rodney Square where everything happens and pretty soon there's going to be a lot more happening as a massive reconstruction project is going to unfold to the tune of six to eight million dollars. On today's show, we're going to talk a little bit about the history of this iconic square, the people who are making things happen and what you can do to get involved. Pardon our dust, the 302 is coming your way. We are at historic Rodney Square where there is about to be a lot of dust and a lot of work. This historic site is getting a multi-million dollar facelift or renovation, so to speak. Anywhere, a price tag of six to eight million dollars, a two-phase project. But we wanted to kind of revisit how this all started. So we're joined now by Pat Maley. She is with the city of Wilmington. She's going to tell us a little bit about the history behind this historic site. Okay. So Pat, thank you very much for joining us. Well, well thanks for having me, Jackie. Rodney Square is a wonderful place. Uh, what most people don't realize is we are almost at 200 years of public service of this block. Wow. Uh, in 1920, or excuse me, 1825, the borough of Wilmington, it was a borough at the time, put together six parcels for the use of First City Reservoir, and they also had like the city uh, engineer's office, a fire station, a few other mm -hmm. things. It stayed as a reservoir until 1877, when because the population was moving west, they moved the reservoir west to the Cool Spring area. At that point, the reservoir was taken down. They built a Newcastle County Courthouse because this was the county seat. Mm -hmm. This stayed as a courthouse site until uh, 1919. However, during that time, we had the wonderful influx of the DuPont family's influence and money. And the second other major thing that contributed to what you're seeing today is the DuPont family's belief in the city beautiful movement, which was one of the major planning uh, thrusts, movements, that started in the uh, mid-19th century and came into the 20th century. It believed that everyone that lived in a, an urban area should have something that was beautiful, something that they felt safe in and they, they could come to and buy into it as part of their world. Sure. Uh, in that regard, the DuPont family started putting money in Originally, the building we see behind us, the Hotel DuPont, that was originally started in 1907. It's an Italian Renaissance style. It was built in six different phases from 07 through to 1941 when the top hat was put on. Wow, that's amazing. And so this has kind of turned into the jewel of the city at Absolutely. That point. Uh, the other buildings that face in were all influenced by the DuPonts. The Wilmington Free Library that's over there started planning in 1917. It took such intense planning and, and, and arguing, as you can imagine. It did, wasn't built until 1923, but that's a, a Beaux-Arts building, and it won national awards for its design. If you could see behind us over there, that when the courthouse was taken down here, that became the site of the Newcastle County Courthouse and the Wilmington City Hall. And because they chose new, neoclassical symmetrical architecture, either entity had an end of it, and it was well balanced. And when you walked into there, you knew you were in some place special. And the last element that was an uh, architectural entry towards this overall scheme was what you see behind you, which was a U.S. post office. That was built during the WPA area from 1935 to 1937. And what you see popping up out of the middle is a lot of negotiations in 1983 when there was a threat to that building. We went to Washington, we worked with HUD, we worked with the National Park Service. The building in the middle is a pop-up of. Or God forbid you use the term facadectomy, but it kept the original building and the WPA works that are in there. Mm -hmm. So the square itself began to be developed when the courthouse was removed. Mm -hmm. There was a design competition. There were five firms that came in as finalists. Mm -hmm. Three were from New York, including one of the firms that built Nemours for one of the DuPont family members. Mm -hmm. uh, one was from Washington, one was from Philadelphia. It was the Philadelphia firm that won the award to design this entire square, and they did it in a traditional balanced symmetrical design which you know, reflected what was happening over at the courthouse there. Mm -hmm. It shows a ma monumental work of Arthur Rodney's, Caesar Rodney's statue that's up there. Of course that's you know, where the name came from. 
The top part of the statue is 14 feet tall. The bottom part's 15 feet of concrete. And there's the bas relief underneath that talks about Rodney's ride to Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. So we had you know, the history element, we had the architectural element, we had a landscape element. And it's gone through various phases of landscape architecture within. And now with what we're looking forward to as we approach the 200 year mark in 2025 is another renaissance of landscape architecture with fountains and other wonderful things. So this truly is the heartbeat section of Wilmington. Uh, we hold you know, the jazz festival here. We hold our caroling on the square here. Right. We hold our Earth Day fairs here. Mm -hmm. This is where people come. They feel free. It's their place to come and go. There's no, they're not constrained. They can see the beautiful architecture of the last hundred years. And it means something to each and every one of us who as na you know, native Wilmingtonian, I feel yeah. uh, obligated to say that. <laughs> yeah, so it's gonna be uh, used in, reused in the way that it was originally intended. Absolutely. Before we go, tell me a little bit about the history of the statue because people walk by that statue every day and maybe don't know the story behind uh, Rodney's ride. Rodney was one of the signers of the Declaration, but what people don't realize is there was a time during the Constitutional Convention that there was great angst as to whether it would actually get passed and we would you know, tell England to take a hike. Uh, he was the deciding vote. He was ill. He had to come from Dover to get to Philadelphia, which you know we didn't ever out one in I-95 at the time. <laughs> no. So he is uh, imaged as being on a horse. There's some debate as to whether it was actually a horse or whether because of his illness he was in a carriage. But you know it shows the gallant Rodney getting to Philadelphia to cast that vote to make that all important, you know, Declaration of Independence. That's amazing, and I'm sure that now that everyone knows the history, they'll be able to enjoy I certainly the, hope so. the uh, Rodney Square even more. Pat, thank you very much You're for more than filling welcome. us in. You are Thanks truly for being a, a treasure, uh, <laughs> history-wise, so thank you so much. You're welcome. We'll be right back. I'm Belinda and you're watching The 302. Welcome back. We're talking about Rodney Square and I'm joined by Wilmington Mayor Mike Berzicki. Mr. Mayor, thank you so much for joining us. Jack. Now there is a, a lot of money that's going to be poured into this historic square. Talk to me about where it's going to go and how this landscape is going to change. Well I, well, I should start by saying that the Rodney Square has been the iconic center of our city forever. I mean, since I've got on my wall an old black and white photo of, uh, of a 1937, 38 uh, <laughs> representation of the square. And it's beautiful and it's dignified. And we want to return it to that position of grandeur that it's held for uh, decades and decades. And we are changing it significantly. We're going to kind of reorient things. We're going to open up the King Street side. We're going to put a fountain up there. So it's, it's a place, it's, it's um, animated. It'll attract kids. It'll attract uh, members of the community to come by and just enjoy the, uh, you know, what will be a lighted, uh, lighted fountain in the evening, uh, operating all on, uh, during the day. We'll have a new orientation of where the stage uh, will be. It'll be on the King Street side, which will make for a wider uh, audience uh, section and, of course, the ability to use uh, Market Street steps and everything else as part of the uh, little semicircle for performances. So it's going to change things significantly. And the other thing you look at is it's, a, it's old. I mean, it's been here for a long, long time, and a lot of these are balustrades, a lot of the concrete work around it has gotten old and decayed and we just want to freshen it up from start to finish. Uh, the lawn itself, we'll have irrigation systems, it's going to be, uh, it'll be everything that I think it can be. In addition, we'll have plantings all around, uh, or all around the square. It should be a very beautiful place to come visit. So it's going to be very lush and green right. and more usable. Now I know that today we have uh, an Earth Day celebration going on, and this is really the the heart of the city. So it's going to be even bigger and bolder, and, and we can use it in many more ways. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we still use it, but I I think that I think it's fair. And I said in my opening uh, when I became mayor two and a half years ago, I said, you know, the square tells you how you feel about yourself, and if it started gets tired and it's starting to 
get a little dilapidated, then I think uh, it starts to tell you a little bit about yourself. And so we're just gonna, we're gonna let this be a reflection of the city, forward thinking, in great condition, beautiful, attractive, animated. That's, that's what, how we feel about Wilmington right now. Now, this is a multi-phase project? It is. Uh, it's about an $8 million project, and the first phase will be about half that. So I think we're going to do this interior, we're going to do the fountain, we're going to open up uh, King Street. And then as to um, 10th Street and 11th Street and Market, that'll be the second phase. Uh, all of the repair work on the exterior will be in the second phase as well. So I think the, uh, the logic from my point of view is make something really beautiful, get our funders excited, get our corporate community excited about what it can be and then I think the, the balance of the funds will be available in short order. So getting the corporate community and the private community, everybody's excited about yeah, this, they, clearly. And, and they have been supportive, but you know, we, you just need, we need more. We need twice as much money. And so I think the best way to get it is to show people something pretty exciting with what you've done with the first tranche of, of money. And uh, I think, as I said, the fountain and changing the, the perimeter of the park will really open things up. And I think you'll see, you'll see people want to support the, uh, the project enthusiastically in the future. Now, when we begin construction, I know the first phase is supposed to be done by 2020, is that correct? Yeah. So, but we have a lot of activities that we have here. I know Clifford Brown, this is the, the well, Clifford home Brown, the festival. Clifford so Brown is safe. Clifford Brown is safe. So we've made accommodations, even in our construction schedule. Uh, to make uh, make room for uh, Clifford Brown, so that's the jazz festival will be as it always has been. It'll be, I think, it's going to be reoriented uh, in a different way, but we'll, we'll wait to see. Mm -hmm. And I know that there's a farmers market here as well. Yeah, the farmers market. I think they're going to move the farmers market up to Market Street, just close off the street, and then have uh, all the vendors up there while they're doing this work down here on the square. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about, uh, you know, the conservancy and, and the community all coming together and, and working on this? Sure. Well, the conservancy has been kind of uh, the spiritual leader of, of this effort, which, and I'm grateful for that. You know, these kinds of projects generally, they don't do very well being started by government itself. I think the soul of these projects tend to be the community leaders who are invested, heavily invested with them. And so the Conservancy has been very supportive right from the beginning and, and uh, they've actually been kind of the, they've performed the function of executive director, unpaid of course, but you know the people yeah. have really done all the heavy lifting have been the Conservancy. And the state, the governors behind Well we've office. all, yeah, and, and so the mayor's office, governor's office have all been supportive because we, we look at this as not only um, kind of a, an iconic center of the city, but it's also an expression to the business community that we want to respect that business district as well and show them that we're, uh, we're, we're good custodians of this business district and we want to make, it, make sure it's, uh, it's attractive, that it is not, frankly, overwhelmed with, uh, with vehicle traffic. We want it to be something people can come visit and just feel like they're having a little bit of, little, little bit of time in the country in the middle of the city. Sure. So for the next year or so, pardon yeah, our dust, it's going to be Yeah, awesome. it'll, be, it'll be a little messy for a year, but that's okay. I think uh, people would prefer to see a little bit messy knowing that, uh, you know, there's something good coming out on the other side. Excellent. Well, thank you, Mr. Yeah, Mayor, for joining you. us. I okay, appreciate it. Okay, my pleasure. It. We'll be right back. I am Charmaine Wright. I'm the medical director at Christiana Care's Center for Special Health Care Needs, and I love the 302. Welcome back. We are at historic Rodney Square talking about a multi-million dollar renovation project. We're here with the chairperson for the Rodney Square Conservancy, Sam Aird. Sam, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. First of all, tell us a little bit about exactly what the Conservancy is and what it does. Yeah, so the Conservancy is a partnership with um, city and state officials, businesses, a lot of the businesses around the square, nonprofit organizations, as well as Wilmington residents. And really the mission is to revitalize this historic square to make it a safe and friendly environment uh, for the community as well as for future generations. 
Now, what exactly does that mean? I know that you, you said that it involves both public and private, mm -hmm. but what are you asking these entities and these people to do? So, so really what we're asking for is one, support, right? So um, we need money to help restore the, the, the square. Um, and also, you know, all the folks have the same vision for, for revitalizing the square. We um, met with two um, uh, landscape architects and they put together some great plans for the square. Um, we had public workshops where we um, brought the community in um, and they provided their feedback on what they envisioned the square to be like. Um, so that's pretty much, much it. I mean, again, it's a two-year project. Um, hopefully two-year project. It's starting right now. We have funds for phase one, phase two. Um, we're still in the process to, to raise money. So whenever you, um, you, you have those, those public dialogues, it's just basically what they'd like to see happen with the square. And what, what was some of the feedback that you mm -hmm. heard from people? So uh, a lot of the feedback was, it's funny, they wanted a fountain. So one of the, in phase one, we're establishing a um, lighted fountain. It's going to be actually right around here where we're standing. Um, they wanted to have it more like clean. Um, the, the square's been a little run down. Um, there mm -hmm. hasn't been a lot of maintenance. Um, we have already two fountains that haven't worked in over 20, 30 years, so restoring the fountains. But they also want programming. They also want to be able to come here with their families. People that work around the square want to be able to come out here and have lunch. Um, and they want events to take place in the square. So getting those programs and the fountains and everything, that's going to take some serious cash. Mm -hmm. And I understand that you guys are also kind of like the driving force between, you know, fundraising. Talk mm -hmm. to me about the challenges and the goals, if you can, um, for, for such a huge project. Mm -hmm. So phase one is going to be around $4 million. And so we're, we have the funds for, um, for phase one. Um, phase two is going to be around, I think, two and a half million, and we're still, we have some money for that, but we still need to do some fundraising, and so we're meeting with a lot of the businesses, um, we're, you know, the city and state as well to, to help um, get money for phase, or for phase two. Now, I know the city is kicking in some money, the mm -hmm. state's kicking in some money, mm -hmm. um, you've got partnerships with several banks and law mm -hmm. firms. Uh, so, but you're really looking for somebody who, you know, even if it's a couple of bucks, you know, to bring it over the, mm -hmm. the so what if somebody wants to, to get involved mm -hmm. one way or the other, maybe just with their checkbook, what, yeah. what can they do? So, well, first of all, I encourage everyone to come to our website, it's rodneysquare.org. Um, people should come there, look, see the site plans, talk, you know, look at the history or, or understand the history of Rodney Square, and then people could donate um, through our website as well. Mm -hmm. Now, is this something that maybe you're also looking into, like grants and things like mm -hmm. that? Could be yes. something on the federal level, maybe. Um, we're looking. We're looking at grants, um, not really at the federal level, mm -hmm. um, but we are looking at you know grants, and we're meeting with um, different folks from different organizations. Um, so this is uh, an ongoing thing, but a crucial part of economic development. I know mm -hmm. the governor governor said that you know, once completed, this could really mean a lot financially for the city. Can mm -hmm. you talk about the impact once it's done on the on the community? Um, so one, I think, I mean, once it's done and it's beautiful and it's revitalized, you know, people will be coming out here. Um, hopefully we'll attract more businesses to Wilmington. And, and, and really, if you think about it, this is the center of Wilmington. Um, and a lot of the businesses are around, you know, around the square. So hopefully, I mean, there's a lot of um, different initiatives um, with Wilmington to attract new businesses, and we think this is one that could help. It really is a, a partnership, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, to get this again over over the finish line. So once it's completed, you know, mm -hmm. I, uh, I guess phase one starts soon. Mm -hmm. You said it's a two-year project. Mm -hmm. Once this com is completed, what will the Conservancy's role be at that juncture? So it's funny, we're actually discussing that right now in our board meetings. Right now, the main focus is the, the Rodney Square Works to get, you know, to focus on the actual project. But after that, we're looking at um, our involvement would be around, you know, potentially maintenance of the square, um, programming some special events on the square, um, you know, really just to make sure that the square keeps on, you know, being as beautiful um, as we want it to be.
I'm sure that you guys are going to be able to take care of that for sure. And there's going to be people that are going to be watching this mm -hmm. and they're going to go to the website and they're going to want to get involved. Is there anything special that you need from the community other than just the support, maybe some dollars? I, yeah, definitely dollars, support. And I really think once we're done with the project, that's where we're going to need people to help again with the programming. Um, you know, maintaining the square, the flower beds and all that. That's where we're going to really need um, the support. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for thank joining you. us, Sam. Thank you. And we'll be right back. On the plans for historic Rodney Square, you can visit the Rodney Square Conservancy.org. We're going to leave you now with a shot of the historic DuPont Hotel. I'm Jackie Ferris. We'll see you next time on the 302.